Hello and welcome to this presentation of my paper MCC, a tool for enfolding color petri nets in PNML format. MCC is a tool designed for a very specific task to unfold the models of high-level petri nets given in PNML syntax into plain equivalent place transition nets. The name of the tool derived from the annual model checking contest, the MCC, a competition of Petri tools that makes an extensive use of PNML files and that provide a large and diverse collection of PNML models, some of which are colored. Our choice when naming MCC was to underline the main focus of the tool, which is to provide an open and easily extensible solution that simplifies the access of developers wanted to engage in the model checking contest. Another one of our goals is to have a performant tool, or at least something that is good enough for participating to the contest. But we always find ways to rewrite history. Our initial goal was to develop a collection of helper applications that were able to deal with colored models. For instance, computing invariants or symmetries directly on the initial model. What we have in our tool now is a mature software that has been developed for three years between each participation to the model checking contest. Before giving more information on how we do things in MCC, I will show you a quick demonstration to tell you how you can use the tool. MCC is easy to install. The tool accepts as input PNML file containing the description of high-level symmetric net, such as those used in the model checking contest. You can then call MCC to transform a file into a plain PTNet. Transformation can be quite fast. We show in this example a transformation that generates a model with more than 2 million places. We provide other commands to output results in other formats. For more information about the tool itself, you can watch the accompanying tool demonstration video. You can also, of course, look at the project page on GitHub. So, what should we remember from the demonstration that we just saw? First, that our application is structured using commands that declares the desired output format. If you go and have a look at the source files for the tool, you will find that the software is organized into a three-step process where each step is implemented as a separate library. Basically, the architecture of MCC is designed to resemble that of a compiler that translates high-level code, in this case colored net, into low-level instruction. We follow a traditional structure with three stages where PNML corresponds to the front end, responsible for syntax and semantics analysis, HLNet provides the intermediate representation, and CoreNet is the back end. Most papers on colored net unfolding focus on this intermediate step. This is where the theoretical result lies. The last step, code generation, is less interesting since it's mostly independent from the input language. So let's have a look at our first library. The input format supported by MCC covers most of the PNML syntax defined in the ISO standard. Level Petri nets form a subset of colored nets defined by a restriction on the types and kind of expressions that are allowed in a net. The core action language of HLPN is a simple first order declarative language organized into categories for types, values, and expressions. Essentially, this language is built around a nominal type system where possible ground types include a constant for plain tokens, called dot, and different operators for declaring finite ordered enumerations type, mainly finite, cyclic, and integer range. The type system also includes product types used for tuples, and the notion of partition elements, which are subset of constants belonging to the same type. We can actually define the subset of the PNML language supported in our tool 
by listing all the XML elements accepted by your parser. Expressions are built from values and operations and describe multi sets of colors which act as a marking of a place. For instance, the language includes operators add and subtract that correspond to multi set union and difference. The language also includes the notion of patterns, which are expressions that include variables in a linear way, and of conditions, which are Boolean expressions derived from a few comparison operators. Those act as guards in the transition. The third library in our transformation pipeline is package cornet, which contains the code for describing a graph-like data structure representing a place transition net. This package contains functions for marshalling a net into a file. A tool developer that would like to adopt or enrich MCC using his own format only needs to provide a similar write function. For instance, during the writing of this paper, I implemented a pnml subcommand that was added on the last release of the tool. Only 100 lines of code were enough to add the ability to output pnml files. Our last library contains the implementation of the unfolding engine. We follow a very basic strategy where for each place, p, of type set t, we create one instance for any value that inhabits the type t. This part is common to most of the existing unfolding algorithm. In the case of the colored net displayed on the left, we have a unique place, grid, whose type is a product of two coordinates. Since we have two possible values for type CD, 0 or 1, this gives four possible results, plus P0 to P3. Next, we need to unload transitions. This can be done one at a time. We can define the environment of a transition as the list of variables mentioned in the guard and the pattern that occurs on the arcs linking to the transition. The simplest approach, which is not optimal, is then to enumerate all possible valuations of the environment and keep only those that satisfy the condition associated with the transition. Our main optimization is to follow a constraint-solving approach where we can avoid enumerating a large part of the possible assignments when we know that the condition cannot be satisfied. For instance, when a sub-expression in a conjunction is falsified. This is less sophisticated than many approaches described in existing work. For instance, we do not try to detect particular kind of expressions where a unification-based approach could have better performances. We also do not use dedicated data structures, like particular decision diagrams, that are implemented in tools like CPNAMI. So, what else can we do with MCC? We will look at three different aspects. First, I will show you a use of MCC to debug and prettify colored models. Next, we will look at the overall performances of the tool, comparing it with other tools used in the model checking contest on a set of difficult examples. Finally, I will present two particular optimizations that are used in the tool. Command HLNet also includes a function to output a textual representation of an AST that is compatible with Tina's net syntax. It generates a net that includes all the places and transitions in a colored model as if it was a place transition net and uses labels to display the expressions associated with transition as well as the initial marking of places. The net also includes nodes, comments similar to sticky notes, for information about types, variables, and arc inscriptions. The results can be displayed and modified with ND, the graphical editor distributed with Tina. We show such an example in the screen capture below. While modification cannot be saved back into PNML, this capability is still useful to inspect color model and is often more accurate than the graphical information distributed by authors in the cover flow of models used in the MCC. We can also use the export function included in ND to generate TXZ figure to be included in LaTeX documents. This is what we use to generate most of the figures displayed in this presentation. 
The problem of efficiently unfolding colored models has been abundantly covered in the literature, and many of the proposed algorithms have been implemented. We can cite the works of Makela with his tool Maria, or of Einer and others on Marcy. We should also refund the work of Cordon and Hall that makes a clever use of decision diagrams in order to compute results for very large instances. This is actually the approach implemented in the tool CPN AMI that provides the reference for place transition instances derived from color model in the MCC. All these works provide good motivation for why it may be useful to unfold a high-level net instead of trying to analyze it directly. To benchmark MCC, we decided to compare it with three tools that participated in the model checking contest over the few years. First one is Tapal, with its Verify PN tool, then Marcy, with the on hull converter, and finally Greatest PN, that includes a Java-based unfolding tool in its editor. In each case, we used a version of the tool that is part of the virtual machine distributed by tool editors during the model checking contest. Since each tool is tailored for a different tool chain and therefore generate very different results, it is difficult to make a precise comparison of the performances. Hence, these results should only be interpreted as a rough estimate. For instance, TAPAL is the only tool in this list that use a binary format and therefore do not output the unfolded net on disk. This means that its computation time do not include the time spent marshalling the result and printing it on file. We selected instances with a processing time of over a second from different models listed in the model checking contest repository. Computations were performed with a time limit of 5 minutes and the limit of 16 gig of RAM. In each case, we give the number of places and transitions in the unfolded net and highlight the best time in blue. An absence of value, denoted with a red box, means the timeout. TAPAL shows very good performances on many instances and significantly outperforms MCC for several models, such as Cephbus and Diffusion. On the opposite, we see that many instances can only be processed with MCC. This is the case, for example, with model BART. Actually, this is also the case with a time limit of one hour. Other interesting examples are models shared memory and family reunion. This suggests that we could further improve our tool by including some of the optimizations used in Verify PN. That seems to be orthogonal to what we have implemented so far. We describe two of these optimizations just after. Actually, sheer performance is not our main goal. We rather seek to return a result for all the colored instances used in the contest in a sensible time. Because who needs to unfold a model too big to be analyzed anyways? At present, there are 193 instances of colored net in the MCC repository, organized into 23 different classes, simply referred to as models. We can return a result for 184 of these instances with the condition of the competition. Moreover, to the best of our knowledge, MCC is the only tool able to return results for at least one instance in all the models. Before concluding, we should look at two optimizations that are implemented in the execution engine. Our first optimization is concerned with the use of colored invariants. It explains our good results with models like BART. The idea is to identify invariant places, meaning places whose marking cannot be changed by firing a transition. A sufficient condition for plus P to be invariant is if for every transition T, there is an arc with inscription E from P to T. If and only if, there is also an arc backward from T to P with another inscription E' prime that is equivalent to E. For practical purpose, we can use syntactical equality instead of semantical equality. We say that such places are stable, a concept equivalent to test arc for an high-level Petrinet. This is the case, for instance, for place stop table in the model trend table shown below. When a place is stable, we know that its marking is fixed. 
This can significantly reduce the set of assignments that need to be enumerated. This situation is not so uncommon. The example that we give below is one of the train. Stop table plays the role of a table that gives the correct braking distance given the speed of the train. This is exactly the behavior that we see in the BART model that was so problematic before. The effect of our second improvement can be observed in model swap given below. In this case, like with the celebrated model of the philosopher, it is possible to detect that the unfolded net is a composition of several copies of the same component. Here n copies, where n is a number or value in type resource. We can interpret the variable x as some kind of scalar set, and each component x is a net with a local copy of its places. As for the transition, we need to keep one copy for each local interaction, such as t2, and two copies for distance interaction, t1. One for the pair of components x and the previous of x, and the other for the pair x and the successor of x. Since type resource is a cyclic enumeration, the composition of all these components form a ring architecture. Our tool is able to recognize this situation automatically. In such a case, we output a result that uses the TPN format, a script language for Petrinet supported by the TINA toolchain. This scripting language includes operators for making copies of a net, adding, chaining, relabeling nets, and compute the product and synchronization of models. It also provides higher order composition patterns, such as pools or rings of component. Basically, what we are doing with this last optimization is to identify a subset of colored net that could be also expressed using an algebra of petri nets. A formal characterization of this class would be a very interesting theoretical result. To conclude, our tool is a new solution to an old problem. It's also a very unassuming tool that focuses on a single narrow task. Nonetheless, we believe that it can still be of interest for the Petrinet community by enriching the PNML ecosystem. Development on MCC started three years ago as a pet project for studying the suitability of the Go programming language to develop formal verification tools. Our assessment in this regard is very positive. Performances are competitive with regards to C++, with good code productivity and mature software libraries. Building executables for multiple platforms and distributing code is very easy. Three years later, MCC is now sufficiently mature to gain more exposure and provides a good showcase for an efficient PNML parser. For future work, we plan to enrich MCC by computing interesting properties of the models during unfolding. For instance, by computing invariance or by finding sets of places that can be clustered together. Thank you for watching this video. I hope to see you all very soon, in person. Bye.